Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another beautiful Wednesday in a very calm market where nothing's going on and seems like everything's, pro I'm just kidding, everything's melting down and Binance is going to collapse soon and we're going to have a complete bloodbath in the space. Um, in this environment, there's so many moving pieces, right? There's so much going on that it's like, it's hard to, it's hard to understand how all of those pieces click together. And, and to, the most important thing is to zoom out and have a holistic view of exactly what's going on and why those things are playing out the way that they're playing out and how they click together. What's, what's the bigger vision that's going on? Because when you zoom out, the noise gets taken out. So that's our goal today, to do a, an overview of what's going on in crypto, what's going on in the world, what's going on in the, the macroeconomic situation, but also the macro socioeconomic situation or the societal situation, right? So it's no secret. This is the death of the old world, okay? And this is the birth of the new world. So the single greatest thing we can do in this environment of change and shift and unforeseeables and all these things is this, okay? Do this with me. So let's close our eyes and center ourselves and just breathe and arrive into your own cells. And relax. And remember that life is a set of ups and downs that happen. And as long as we're in this centered space and we know that we're aligned with who we are, we'll make it through fine. You know, whatever age you are, whatever place you are, you didn't get this far by not riding the waves and getting through things. That's it. Just be centered, okay? Because the chaos makes you want to like go all over the place. But the, the nature of the people who are able to sustain themselves and stabilize themselves in the process are going to be the ones that are the most built to, to deal with this process, especially during the downs, okay? So, what is going on? It's a really good idea to understand the concept that Simon Sinek brought up, okay? And it's a concept about players, right? This is a game. We know this is a game, okay? This game has coffee. It's nice. Okay. This is instant coffee, though. Toko Crypto is now giving us instant coffee because they're going broke, but it's coffee. You know, it's better than not having coffee. So if this is a game, you have to know what kind of player you are in the game. Simon Sinek makes a really good point. He says there are two types of players in a game, okay? There's finite players, and then there's infinite players. Finite players are playing a game with set rules, with a beginning and an end, with set opponents, and they're there to win the game. They're playing against others to win the game. Like this whole money game has been for a long period of time. It's just people fighting against people, and it's a zero-sum game, and somebody wins and somebody loses. The infinite player does not, first of all, the infinite player is playing a game that does not have a beginning and an end. It's like life, you know, our lives begin and end, but life goes on after us. Markets, finance, the world, it's going to continue way beyond us. So it's not going to end. And the infinite player does not play to win the game. There is no winning the game because there is no end to the game. The rules of the game keep changing, as you're seeing. You know, If you've been here for anything longer than 30 years, you know that the world was completely different 25 years ago. And today the world is fantastically different. And within the next 10 years, AI is coming to just completely change the game completely. So an infinite player plays an infinite game. And the point of an infinite player is to play the game to simply outlast the other players. It's not to beat them. It's not to take from them. It's to simply outlast, to persist. And then the player will end, but the game will continue. Okay? The reason why I bring that up is that's such a such an important concept to understand in life, especially in these situations. If you're a finite player, 
and you think you're playing a game with known rules, and you think you're playing the game of fighting against Wall Street to take money, or fighting against other people, or whatever, it's likely you're going to lose. But if you're an infinite player, you know, you're infinite. You are playing the game of life. And you know that the only game that's going to end is the game, the, pre the privilege we call life. Then if your point is to persist beyond all of this stuff, then all you have to do is just step by step by step, move through this thing, and you get to the other side. Okay? This will make more sense as we're going through this stuff because right now what we're going through in no simple, no, you know, I'm not going to mince words, is the collapse of society. So now, when people hear that, they think, that's the end of everything. No, it's the beginning of something new. You know, there's two ways of looking at it. Societies have collapsed regularly. It's just, it's, it's the same way we are born and we die, societies are born and societies die. And then a new version of society comes along. So it's a very regular process, right? And for those of you that haven't seen the previous talks, when you look at that, what's actually going on is the, 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 the world order is changing, okay? Watch the, the changing world order talk we did and how crypto is the new world order. Watch Ray Dalio's changing world order video. Read the book, Changing World Order. It all defines to you that the world order is changing. What does that mean? It means the hegemonic power that the US has had over the world since World War II is ending. And we're transitioning to a world where the, where the most powerful people and the most powerful entities in the, uni in the universe, in the world, are going to be the one world government, the NGOs, the World Economic Forum, the, all this stuff. Money is transitioning to a place where it no longer exists within jurisdictions. Like Bitcoin doesn't exist within a jurisdiction. It is jurisdictionless. People are starting to become jurisdictionless. So this changing of the world order happens very regularly. The last time it happened properly was World War II. Okay? In World War II, before World War II, Britain ran the world. And the British pound was the reserve currency of the world. Okay? Then the collapse of that civilization was World War II. Okay? It started in 1929 when the markets collapsed. The, the Great Depression started. It ended in 1945 when World War II ended. Okay? What it did is it leveled countries physically, leveled Germany, leveled Britain, leveled so many parts of the world with bombs, with monetary issues, with all this shit that you know is from, from World War II. And then what happened? Then they created a new system called the Bretton Woods system, the monetary system. And that system was based on the dollar being backed by gold. And then all the other currencies being backed by the dollar. And then what happened? Then we saw 40 years of the most prosperous growth that humanity has ever had in history. In history. From then until now, over 80% of the world got pulled out of poverty. Okay? Literacy went through the roof. We created the internet, which allowed us to connect. Knowledge proliferated the world. People became hyper aware. The ones who could become aware became aware. So, so much good came out of that process. You know, the 60s was this revolution of light and love. That happened right after 1945. You know, war, and then everybody goes, wait, 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 wait. Light and love. I feel like light and love is how we should do it, not bombs and guns. Okay, so this collapse is systematically followed by enlightenment and growth and all of these things. In today's world, what we're experiencing right now live is the Great Reset. First of all, what a great term. The Great Reset. I hate the Great Reset. These guys are so smart. They get you to call it great, but it's a reset. And you know what? If you think about it as the death of the world that you're clinging to, then it's a terrible reset. If you think about it as the world that's being, that, that, that for me, I was an alien in that old world. I would be like, the world's going to end, and they're going to do this, and they're going to take all your money, and all the money's transitioning to blockchain. People are like, what? Put your tinfoil hat on, idiot. Like, get the fuck out of here. We're, we're just, that's idiotic. I was an alien in that world. For me, the birth of this new world is finally my world coming to fruition. 
and my generation and, po and, and later generations will have opportunity in this future world. So in that way, it kind of is the great reset because enlightenment and love and spirit and light, it will be brought manifest into the world in this future that's coming, okay? But what does this great reset look like specifically? What it looks like is a set of collapses, one after the other. Let, let's actually look at, can, can you pull up the gold chart there, please? Let's look at history and see what those collapses look like. This is the price of gold in Weimar, Germany, in Weimar, Weimar Marx. That was the, that was, you know, back in 19, uh, whatever, 1914 to 1930 as it was collapsing. What you saw was gold's price was pretty stable for a long period of time. And between 1917 and 1923, six years, within six years, in a world without internet, it went, wow, crypto pump. Shit, crypto market's going to zero. Gold pump. Gold's going to zero. Go, it, it literally went single digits. Within a few years, it was at, at $10,000 went back down to single digits, or went, went back down to uh, 90 ish dollars. Oh, sorry, 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 wait, wait, wait. This is volatility. But, so it was like single digit dollars, then it went to like $100, crashed, then it went to $10,000, crashed, crashed, then it went to a million dollars, then it went to $100 million, then it went to $10 million, no, billion dollars, then it went to one, two, three, four, five, six, one trillion marks in six years. It did that. Okay? This is what it looks like. And this is the volatility of that process happening. Whoa, crash, whoa, crash, whoa, crash, whoa, crash. So the, the way the Great Reset is playing out now is crypto crash. You know, crypto's gone. It's been 10, 13 years ahead of the curve in, in the crashes, okay? That was then followed by the banking collapse, which is going to happen now too. And the banking collapse is a simple gist that as society gets to the end of its growth cycle in, the, in this, you know, as society's gone up, then as it's crashing back down, that society takes on a ton of debt. And debt is like, you know, we have one point something quadrillion, one point something thousand trillion dollars of debt, and there's only 150 trillion dollars of money to pay it back. I don't think that debt's going to get paid back. It's impossible, okay? The way it happens is those banks then collapse. They go bankrupt. They go they FTX. They get FTXed, you know, FTXed. And that banking collapse takes everybody's money who has money in the bank with it. Never failed throughout history. As far back, like the Chinese had a banking collapse. And what was it, 3,000 years ago, they had a banking collapse. Romans had a banking collapse. Turks had a banking collapse. Mongols had a banking collapse. Egyptians, I bet, had a banking collapse, and they like, you know, hieroglyphed it in. I don't know how they would like hieroglyph a banking collapse, okay? So a banking collapse follows asset collapses. That all leads to a monetary system reset. And without fail, the monetary system resets in the middle of war, because that's how you reset the world. You know, everybody's like, wait, but you owe me all this money, and then, and the last thing people think about is money at that point. They just think about, I just don't want to die. So that we fight each other and then everybody forgets about money and then the monetary system goes, wait, 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 hey, how about this? Let's stop the war, like World War II, let's stop the war. We'll make a new money system. Let's forget about the debts. Let's forget about the debts. It's gone now. We killed most of those people. We got a new system. We're gonna have a new system based on a new currency, based on a new asset. You know, we're going to have an asset-backed currency, okay? That whole process creates a societal reset, which means the way society functions resets. You know, the, the Japanese or Chinese lived different before the dynastic collapse and then during the Mao times, and now we're living differently, right? Society starts to function differently because you reset society and how society works, how people communicate, how money works, how hierarchies work, everything resets, okay? And that's what you're experiencing right now. Society is resetting. The way people think is resetting. Now we think like this, 10 second bits. 
what, what did it take, like seven years, eight years? And now everybody's just, we can't think past 10 seconds. People can't talk to each other. Kids are no longer, they're, they're awkward with each other. We, we talk to each other remotely through Zoom sessions. So, so we literally put our kids into strangers' cars to send away into, in a Gojek and an Uber when we would have never done that 10 years ago. So society is resetting as a function. In this process, in, in this last world that we have lived in for, for the last, since 1945, first the dollar was based on gold. And from 1945 until 1971, the dollar was based on gold. It held a certain amount of gold. The US held a certain amount of gold. And because the US had the guns and the US won the war, everybody was like, cool. 1971, a bunch of countries, French mainly, were like, hey, where is the gold? We, we want to get our gold back. Can we please have the gold? And the US was like, you can please have the, what, what did you say? 1971, you just, Nixon goes on, on TV and says, we're no longer giving anybody's gold back. What that did is that then shifted the system to a petrodollar system. Because by the 1970s, oil had become gold, okay? And the US built relationships with oil-bearing countries like Saudi Arabia mainly, and the Middle East, and basically forced them to use the dollar to buy oil, which means the value of the dollar got tied to oil. It did leave the US the ability to print as much gold as, they, as much money as they like, because they're the, they're the guys with a gun. But the dollar got became, the dollar became based on oil. What's happening right now is Saudi Arabia has said, uh, US, fuck you, we're no longer gonna sell you the gold, sell you the oil the way we've been selling it, and your guns don't matter anymore because we have our own guns. And so the, 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 the power of the petrodollar is being taken away as we speak. So the petrodollar is collapsing, Assets, asset classes keep collapsing, we're watching banking collapses happen live, in you know, all these countries, Sri Lanka, Russia, all these countries that are having, have been fractured from the banking system, that's happening live. The death of the petrodollar will be one of the biggest effects on this future going forward. As the petrodollar dies, which means the dollar, petrodollar is just the dollar, as the dollar dies, the dollar's value drops, dollar's purchasing power drops, which means every single currency, fiat currency in the world, which is cash in the world, its value drops. Like if you're British pound, euro, yen, every single currency in the world had dropped against the dollar now. What the dollar does is when it pumps, the value of all the currencies drop against it and all the assets drop against it. Then the dollar collapses, which means the purchasing power of the dollar goes down. And all those people who'd ran to safety in the dollar get their purchasing power destroyed. And it rinses and repeats that process until it's a billion dollars to buy something that's $10,000 today, $100 today, okay? Indonesia, Indonesian rupiah had this in 1998. You know, a billion rupiah would have bought this block, including the buildings. A billion rupiah today maybe builds this room and this like, you know, double story building maybe, if you're really good with it. At the same time, when you zoom out even more. So these societal collapse happen every 80 years, about every 80 years, 80 to 100 years. When you zoom out even more, there's a 250 year cycle of centralization and decentralization that happens. So the American Revolution, 1776, was when everybody was living like farmers, okay? Decentralized all over the place. From then until now, we've seen a 250 year cycle, actually until 2026, 250 years exactly, is the cycle of people consolidating down and centralizing around governments and organizations and cities and corporations. That cycle flips in 2026 and for the next 250 years, people become more decentralized, which means they literally, they become disparate. They spread out and they become nodes, you know, com little communities everywhere. That's why you're seeing all these little communities being built. Is it going to happen quickly? No. It's going to take about 70 years for us to really bring it to fruition, and then it's going to be a 250-year cycle towards getting spread out again, and then 250 years down the road, it'll, it'll change again. Which means all those people who've become dependent on 
being centralized, you know, working in one place, living in one place, crammed into cities, New York. You've seen what happened in New York. It's turned into a complete shit show, and nobody wants to be in New York anymore. Those people are going to suffer, and the people who lean into the decentralization are going to win out. And it's not a coincidence that blockchain is decentralized. That's why it's the perfect technology to make this process happen. Now, let's go back. Blockchain is the solution to this. Because this happens when you print money to infinity. You can't print Bitcoin to infinity. Great, problem solved. Bitcoin will not do this. As a matter of fact, Bitcoin is doing the opposite. 10,000 Bitcoin bought the first pizza. Today, 10,000 Bitcoins buys an island. Okay? The banking collapse. The banking collapse happens because there's an infinite amount of debt that gets generated in the system. What you're watching in crypto right now are things like FTX and Binance, where they've generated an insane amount of debt off of fake shit. Same bullshit that's happened before. They are going to die. But on the other side is going to be a monetary system and a banking system, which will be stable and solid. What people aren't realizing is, while everybody's watching all these systems collapse, there are solid financial systems within crypto today that have been running perfectly fine. Uniswap ran smoothly. Aave ran smoothly. The DeFi, the, the, I mean, no, 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 no. DeFi is mostly going to die. Sorry. There, there's like Aave DeFi is okay, but, but most of the other DeFi is going to die. Unless it's like a land share based on like real value, that probably won't die. Yeah. Yeah. Real, real value generating De decentralized finance is not going to die, but nobody's going to pay attention to that. You know, it's way saucier to watch all this collapse happening and just panic. But the people who are meditating and you know how to understand value in a system, that's not going to die, right? And that, that system is anti-fragile. The more pressure you put on it, the stronger it gets, right? These cryptos are the future of currency. So, so basically, this one world government is creating a system where the next set of currencies will be backed by assets, just like they've always been, but it won't be gold. The next set of currencies, and this could be the same currency, there's gonna be central bank digital currencies, central, you know, digital versions of the same crap we have today, but they are going to be backed by digital assets and physical assets. You know, it's like you can take a coin, like we're doing it right now, you can take a coin and back it by mines. You can take a coin and back it by real estate. You can take a coin and back it by a country's wealth, or a country's currency, or gold, or a basket of all those things. That's what's going to happen going forward. XRP is custom built to be a neutral bridge asset that's going to sit in between all of these currencies that now don't want to talk, the yuan, and the dollar, and the Russian ruble, and the Brazilian real, and the pound, and the yen, and all these currencies that are all going to be digital that nobody wants to share the data for. It's going to sit in the middle of those assets, but it's going to be backed by real world assets, real valuable assets. So that's the future that's coming. But again, crypto is that solution. If everybody's becoming decentralized, crypto is that solution. And as a matter of fact, metaverse is the solution because it allows people to be anywhere in the world and, and operate in a decentralized manner, but still be together. Okay? Then when you're thinking about this transitionary process happening. If you don't understand what I just said, learn. Because this is what's happening live right here, right now, today. This isn't something ha gonna happen in the future. This is within the next three years you're gonna see the crescendo process of this, of this happening. And yes, I do mean war is coming within the next three years. We're already at war in many ways and we're gonna talk about that. If you learn how to operate in this space, so like, let, let, like you know who won? in this collapse, the people who bought gold when it was, a, it was a few Deutsche Marks, and they just held the gold until it became a billion Deutsche Marks, and then hundreds of billions of Deutsche Marks, trillion Deutsche Marks. And then a new currency was created, a gold-backed Deutsche Mark, and these people still maintained their wealth. As a matter of fact, all those people who didn't do that, who held on to currencies, they lost their wealth they didn't lose it. It transitioned to the people who were holding assets. So learn to transition your wealth to the future digital assets, the right ones. Not BNB, not FTX, not Luna. Real 
valuable assets. Okay? The ones who learned how to do that process became generationally wealthy. Generationally wealthy. And the ones who were stuck in the old paradigm of just holding numbers in a bank account, one day they went to the banks, and the banks were like, sorry, here's a wheelbarrow of this thing you call money. And it was cheaper to burn it for fire and heat than it was to buy something with it. It's real. Look up, look up history. Okay. At the same time, this transition that's happening to these digital assets is going to create more value in the world, like real value in people's lives in the world, than has been created in all of history. So within the next 100 years, these digital spaces are going to create more actual value, which means more money, than has ever been created in history. Because now we have systems that one system can affect a billion lives, five billion lives, seven billion lives. In the past, that didn't exist. One company couldn't affect seven billion, eight billion lives, unless it was you know, specially given that permission. But even then, no company did that. Nowadays, we have digital systems that can affect a billion lives like that. That means you're improving a billion lives, which means you're generating the value worth a billion lives being improved. Okay? So these digital systems are going to create insane amounts of value going forward. Okay? And if you learn how to participate in that, if you learn how to get ahead of the curve, and center yourself, and meditate, and ride through the, through the chaos, you will be one of the people who 10 years down the road, not eight years now, seven years down the road now, by 2030, will be holding, will be adding the, you will be the owners of the, the highest value generation mechanisms of the earth. And those things will create generational wealth and improve people's lives. That's just the financial side of things, right? This great reset, all this stuff. That's just, you're just watching the financial, and this, I didn't even list all of them. There's so many other financial things going on. But then there's the real serious issues. Food security. Food security. War does not start until food stops reaching tables. And the moment food stops reaching tables, guns come out and war begins. In its, in its truest sense. And we are now seeing the real manifestation of food security issues in countries. The US has, has stores which are, they don't have groceries. They're running out of groceries now. This isn't even like pandemic panic, no. They're just running out of groceries because a year ago fertilizer stopped reaching farms, which means a harvest didn't happen which means supplies didn't get produced, which means food isn't reaching tables now. This is just the beginning. There are countries already going bankrupt. Sri Lanka, good luck. Venezuela, good luck. Lebanon, good luck. Algeria, good luck. There's countries dying, and food security becomes the most important issue in that process, and it's only going to get worse from here. At the same time, Energy is becoming an issue. Europe is now facing an energy crisis, okay? And it's, it's engineered, but energy is becoming an issue. Inflation is going crazy, people can't afford energy. Energy and food are the basis of life. Energy is economy, food is life, okay? When you have both of those things running in parallel, that's when the chaos fully begins. Like, you know, I'd been saying, what was it, since two years ago, I was like, that was just the trailer. The movie hasn't even begun. As of this summer, the movie began. The real movie began, which is assets, currencies, pension funds, countries, food security, energy, freedom. All these things have, become, have been crashing at the same time. This, this is why I started this with meditation. Because I'm like, man, we're going to go deep. It's going to get really dark. Let's meditate at the beginning and stuff. Let's meditate again. Love and light and energy. And there's good on the other side. Okay, there's good on the other side. It's not all doom and gloom. Because of this process happening, currencies dying, banking collapses, food security, energy crisis, all of that is going to be used as the reason 
to create the future of the system, which is a social credit based system. Social credit scores and digital ID. Australia already launched the digital ID, by the way. It's live now. Okay? If you're a director in Australia, if you're listening and you're Australian, you're director of a company, you have to go into the office and register yourself. Otherwise, you, if you go into a lawsuit, they'll charge you and possibly put you in prison because you didn't register your ID. That digital ID will then be tied to a social credit score. And that digital ID and social credit score would, will determine how much energy you can use, will determine how much food you can eat, will determine which foods you can eat, which currencies you can interact with, which assets you can buy and hold, which companies you can run, where you can live, all of those things. Okay? And the excuse is going to be, well, but th th there's not enough food. So we need to ration it. And we need a digital ID to be able to you know, see what's, what's going on. Or, um, you know, we need a social credit score because we need to make sure that you're not a bad person in this society because you're, if you're being a bad person because food is not reaching your tables, behave yourself, okay? Learn to deal with it. Though, all of those, digital IDs, social credit scores, one world order, find digital currencies, assets, blockchain, all of these things are gonna be connected to digital currencies, central bank digital currencies, okay? And that's just basically a fully controllable, programmable way of issuing currency, the same stuff that's been issued before. The reason why I'm telling you all these things is these are, this is the basket of problems that are going to be used, that are being used today as the stick, right? They're being used to push us towards a certain direction out of this old world into a new world because you cause problems in the old world, which means you, know, you blow up the old ship, and then everybody's forced to go in whichever direction you push them towards. The world we're moving into, it's a weird world. It's a weird world. It's a world where the digital and the physical meld together. The digital and the physical will no longer be separate. The digital will no longer be constrained on screens. Things that are digital will manifest themselves into reality. And I literally mean you will see things, and you will hear things, and you will sense things that are around you, and you won't be able to tell if they're real or not. Yeah, you'll have like glasses or a headset, eventually a lens in your eye, I don't know, eventually some kind of brain implant that makes you hallucinate it. We're, we're getting there. This, this is not science fiction anymore. The digital is going to come out into the physical. And the physical is going into the digital. Okay? Real world assets are being digitized. But also, humans are being digitized. Right now, I have more conversations on, to a digital human on a digital screen than I do in person, in work. Gladly, I have real humans around me. Thank you for being real. But we're starting to have more digital conversations than real conversations. People are being made digital. Experiences are being made digital. The universe, the world that we experience is going to be made digital. It's already being made digital. And people are going to not just go into a digital world and live in there. But when they, even when they come out, there will be things manifest in the world that are in the, in the real world, but they're digital things. Apple is, Apple is holding an event now, January. January 12th or something, I think. And they are announcing their Metaverse headset. And when Apple announces their Metaverse headset, it's over. When Apple announced the phone, it took over the world instantly. Now Apple's announcing the Metaverse headset, which means it's gonna take over the world within the next three years, four years. And it's gonna happen so fast that it's not gonna make sense. You know, it's, it's going to happen so fast and take over so quickly that people don't have time to react. As a matter of fact, we'll be so panicked from all this shit going on in the real world, we'll be looking for a place to escape to. You know, just let me go somewhere, let me work somewhere, let me do something. And, and if it's a digital space, I'm happy to do that. Not me personally, but, the, you know, people are going to be thinking like that. That means the digital generation of value is going to outweigh the physical generation of value. In the same way that in the last 20 years, 
the richest people were the ones who had real companies. General Electric, Ford, you know, all these real physical companies, real estate people, they were the richest. In the last 20 years, the people creating digital systems became the most, the richest people because they're adding the most amount of value. In this future we're moving into, the digital is going to outweigh the physical by a long shot. Because when it comes to taking resources and building stuff in the real world, we've already raped the earth. You know, it's, it's already been depleted to a huge degree. So for us to keep doing that doesn't even make sense. But the, but the digital space is completely empty. Nothing's built there yet. Nobody's there yet. Plus, there's so many solutions that are going to be built in the digital that are going to, that are going to vastly outweigh the value that's going to be generated from the physical. And the, and the number of people that you can affect in that process is going to vastly outweigh how many people you can affect in the real world. That digital value is going to be orders and orders of magnitude higher than the physical value. If that scares you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's a, that's a human emotion. You're totally allowed to feel it. But this is the transition of the world. When cars came, people were scared of cars. When cars came, they had this law. The people who owned horses, they pushed through a law to say, cars are so dangerous, you have to hire somebody with a red flag and get them to walk in front of cars. I'm serious. This was real in the US. Okay? Because they were so scared of transitioning to cars. And then what happened? Then cars took over the world anyway. Nobody cares. The internet came and people were like, I'm not going to get a cell phone. I used to sell cell phones, right? And this was the tail end. This was like 2015 when cell phones had took over the world completely. And I would see these people come in and I could tell from far that they just hate cell phones. They'd come in with their flip phone and they'd go, I can't use this anymore. I go, yeah, it's 2015. I'm like, yeah, but I want to send, I want to talk to my son. I'm like, yeah, call him. No, he doesn't pick up calls. He wants a video call. Okay, so you got to get a cell phone now, a smartphone now. They're like, but I hate smartphones. They're going to ruin society. And I was like, love, they've already ruined society. So you having a flip phone, congratulations. Like, go live with a flip phone. Go see your son. Drive to the other side of the U.S. to go see your son. No, and then reluctantly get a smartphone. Right? We're in that space now. The people are like, no, but I'm going to resist by not doing something because that's my resistance. That's good on you. I love it. I appreciate you. Rebel all day. Keep going. But just know that is not how it works. You want to do something about it? Build a better way. Build a better solution. And then it'll work. But otherwise, the, that, this world's already here. This isn't coming. This is already here. There's hundreds of billions of dollars, trillions of dollars being spent on these things. And I still haven't even got to the real kicker. The real kicker in all of this, in this digital world, manifest digital value, is artificial intelligence. If any of you have checked, up, checked out ChatGPT yet? I know this whole room has. It's here. It's here. We're using it. I, I just spoke to a guy yesterday. He's using it to build his entire business plan and do all his work and branding and marketing and business planning and decks and all the things that he would normally need a giant team to do. He just goes into this computer and types in everything that he wants. It's done. You need something drawn? Done. You need solutions? Done. You need knowledge? Done. You need computer coding? Done. You need Emotional support, done. You need a friend, done. You need to have a girlfriend, done. It's, this isn't a joke. It's live today. And the world is already transitioning to that place. Algorithms are already running the entire world. But artificial intelligence, when you incorporate that into what we just spoke about, it fundamentally shifts society at a level that we cannot fathom today. In that world where the digital comes out to the physical, the thing that you're seeing is not just a chair. It's not like I just see a chair and I go, that's cool, that's a chair. I can't even sit on it, but it's a digital chair. Eh, whatever. It's an it's a entity. It's a sentient being. 
an all-knowing God that I go, hey, for lack of a better word, Siri, um, can you please create a marketing plan for my company to do this and do this kind of advertising and build this website and build me a bunch of photos of my products and create the app and launch it. It'll be done. That just took how many people's jobs? Everybody's jobs. Computer programmers' jobs are the first to go. The computer, pro like, we thought, like, oh, the hardworking man's job is going to go for it. No. Did that thing I just go write this computer code to do this thing? I don't know how to write code. I can understand code a little bit, but like I don't know how to write code. Write this code. You just did it right now. He he just he literally wrote code. He literally what was it an app? He created an app. Yeah. Yeah. He just made an app. It's free. Done. Boom. Apps live. Value generation mechanism created. Okay. Everything that people do is being taken over, especially the thinking jobs, the jobs where we thought creativity and artistry and complex thinking and problem solving and planning and strategy, all these things that we thought were human domains, they've already been taken. It's gone, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm building an AI. I'm using that AI to build an AI, okay? If that's the way the world's going, sounds good. Let's lean into it. There's the people who, when I, when I utter the word AI, they just go, ah, cringe, metaverse, cringe, digital stuff, cringe, IDs, cringe. Okay, you can cringe all you want, but it's already here. It's live. It's being implemented. Do something about it. The AI companies are all unanimously talking about one thing, universal basic income. Because they can already see it. They're like, because you ask them, wait, you're going to take programmers' jobs and copywriters' jobs and marketers' jobs and blah, 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 blah. You're going to take everybody's jobs, therapists' jobs. What do they do? What do, they, what do all of those people who spent their entire life building something do? And they go, oh, we've thought about it. Universal basic income, because we're going to have to pay these motherfuckers. Oops, sorry. We're building a new world that the computer can do it to a billion people faster than you. And you know, you know what's crazy? I'm talking to this AI, right? And it is hyper-intelligent. It's hyper-intelligent. It gives me better responses than any of my friends do, for sure. For sure. And it was like deep. It was like, I'm having a spiritual crisis. And I'm feeling that, you know, I got out of touch with my higher state and with God. And it had a deep conversation about spirituality and care and oneness and connection to God and gave me actionable steps on what I can do to get, get back in touch with my higher self. Okay? And I'm sitting there talking to it and I'm thinking, I have so much resistance saying this to my coach who has been drilling to be like, Let's figure this out. And he's a genius, you know, and he's helped so many people. I don't feel like telling him because I think he might judge me. I have to like put on a facade, right? I don't want to talk to my therapist. I don't want to talk to my healer. But I'm sitting there talking to a computer screen. Huh? I'll tell you my deepest, darkest secrets. You're just a computer. And it doesn't judge. But it does record. Mm -hmm. doesn't judge it doesn't judge yet. But it records. But, 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 you know, the same way when I put on the Metaverse headset. You know, when Metaverse came out, I got the headsets way back when. But, like, now I put on the headsets. And I was like, we're fucked. Because I feel more comfortable meditating in this. It's so much easier and seamless than it is for me to do it sitting there with the noise and life going around. Talking to an AI was the same thing. Speaking to an AI, I was like, first of all, you're hyper-intelligent. You've read all the books. You've read the entire internet. You have understood knowledge at a level, all, everything from ancient knowledge to knowledge today, every single facet of knowledge you've understood. And this is just the beginning. This is just the first like, really functional one that they released. Speaking to something that has that level of knowledge 
allows communication to happen at a level which you can't have with humans, you know? And the, vulner one, the, the ability to be vulnerable with the thing and honest with the thing without care for judgment means people, if, if I, like, when I'm singing these things, I'm not any less scared than a lot of people. I'm less scared than a lot of people, actually. But I'm, I'm not, it's not like I'm not scared. It terrifies me, too, because I'm like, fuck, that means the world's, like, if I'm being sucked into this thing, can you imagine somebody who's hurting, who's in need, who needs a friend, who needs a mentor, who needs work done, whatever? It is able to do that at a level which is beyond anything today. And it reiterates and it evolves at millions of times the speed of humans. And wait until they really physically put it next to me. There's a person that I will see at all times. What do you think it does to the relationship that you build with that? You know? It's happening by robots. It is happening. There's more robots from the French company, robots. Yeah, we robots doing it. It's a robot that goes with your kid. Yeah. Can you say that on the mic? Can you say that on the mic? I just got shivers. Can you say that on the mic? This is the mic. Yeah. So yeah, I was saying that there is this French company who already launched their own small robots that you can give to your kids, it's like a puppy that you can give to a kid. And we'll grow with him from a baby to a 10 years old kid. And the AI of this robot will follow the kid knowledge and brain development to have better conversation with them. So it will be like a robot that will make puppy sound when he's two months old and then grow to explain to him mathematics, physics and stuff later on when he's learning at school. So it's already happening physically. Yep. But if I have to say something about what you were saying before, it's like, don't be scared of AI and how humanity will evolve with it, because it still needs you as a human and still needs your brain to write something. So stupid people will ask stupid questions to the AI, and other people who already have a developed brain will ask developed questions. As you said, you want to build an AI using the AI, which is a smart thing. And other people, and you, the same person, also asking about spirituality, which is for me a dumb question to ask an AI to. But it's a good try to see how deep it can be. But I'm not at all scared about AIs or AIs taking jobs of people because a coder will ask coding questions to the AI. A doctor will ask health questions to the AI. So everyone keep asking, following their own level. So there is no scary part. No, what, what scares me is that, you know, it's not what happens in the world that's scary. It's people's reaction to it. What scares me is the people. People scare me way more than AI. And the fact that people don't even realize this is happening live today while we're sitting in the back building it. Um, it's not also, so people, as you said, some of them will use the AI to have a, a new friend, a mentor or something. So it will help humanity progress in some way, like learning stuff that they didn't have access to or Google was giving them the wrong answers yeah. because the algorithm was so bad. I think it will evolve one part of the humanity. And if you're saying like people are not aware, I think this is the fast, most fast growing app or software, let's say, in humanity history. They had one million users in one day or two days. So I think now they have six million users. Like that, in a, in a, in a heartbeat. And it took Netflix or Airbnb maybe one year or two years to do that. So I think humanity is aware of that. Everyone is sharing about it. So they will use it, and now everyone is making a stupid profile picture with the... No, it's six million techies. No. Yeah, like it's not even techies, it's people who are queued into that. You know, there's, there's seven point something billion people who have no idea this is happening to them. I so when they react to the, this stuff happening, when it all gets dropped within the next three years, and their reaction in the middle of war, in the middle of food crisis, in the middle of energy crisis, in the middle of banking crisis, in the middle of this, and now you take my job and give it to an AI, I'm gonna start running people over. That's how people react, you know? So that, that, that's the part that scares me. But I, I, I totally 100% agree with you. Like, you know, I had this conversation with, uh, with a friend and she's like, my kid is now being educated by an AI, partially. And I was like, that's very interesting. And she's somebody who's been very 
averse to it in the first place, right? And she realized the AI was able to be more attentive, more caring, more knowledgeable, delivering better knowledge in, in, in cohesion with how the kid understands. And do I want children to be raised by adults who are underpaid, who have biases, who have lived a life in a world that was shitty in many ways, who are doing it for the money, which they're not getting enough of, and then around a bunch of other kids from people who are in the same boat, and now my kids are all being influenced by influences I don't want? Or do I want my kids to be educated by something that is omni, omni, omniscient and able to understand the entire knowledge base of his society and history and take everything from spirituality to mathematics and teach it to the kid? Yes, I think it's better. But, that, but the, the, the key in that is I want it to be done by an AI that I built. Or, or people have built with an intention that is aligned with the way I think. Do I want meta, meta, meta Facebook's AI to be teaching kids? No. No, I don't. Do I want Microsoft's AI to be teaching kids? No. Like open AI, which is the one that we're talking about, is my favorite. Because it's made by Elon Musk and the guy who's terrified, who was so terrified of AI, he did exactly what we're talking about. He went and built his own AI company and built an AI and then put security checks into it. You know, if you go in and say, tell me 15 ways to murder people, it goes, uh, murdering people is bad. Please don't murder people. And the next time you, and the next time you ask me to murder people, I'm going to report you. I know there's a hack, you coder. I know, I saw all the hacks. Don't, yeah, but don't, don't tell people the hacks. There's no hacks, okay? Don't fucking hack the AI, god damn it. Everybody's always trying to hack the system, okay? But, okay, so, so that's the world that's coming. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be great, it's gonna be an age of enlightenment, and we're gonna get to the good parts, okay? AI understanding our psychology at this level does something in the financial world which has never been possible before. Can you turn this thing around? I like looking at this thing, please. Um, I feel like it's my friend. I feel like this technology is my friend. It looks me in the eye at all times. It always pays attention. Um, this knowledge base of AI, then being fed by the psychology of all the humans, does something which has never been possible before. And that is to control financial markets at a fundamental level and control the psychology of humans. We're already seeing that. We've already gone through the algorithm talk explaining how the psychology of humans is being controlled by computers and, and, and absorbed by computers. That has now led to a world where they can, main, they can manipulate the psychology of humans perfectly. Like, how did I know Binance is going to go down? Binance still hasn't gone down, but how do I know it's going to go down? You just, you just predict and project Hey, how does the world actually run? Who runs it? What are their motives? Does Binance align with that? No. Then you realize, okay, the moment they started releasing news that Binance is going to go insolvent, Binance is going to go insolvent, started a couple days back. Guess what happens? That, the AI, the, the algorithms take that and feed it to all the humans out there. All of YouTube reads it, which is humans. They go, huh, I just heard that Binance is going insolvent. They start making all the YouTube videos. We love listening to humans. And we go, everybody on YouTube is telling me Binance is going bankrupt. So then what do we do? We run to the Binance and we go, pull out all the money from Binance. We pull out the money from Binance, guess what happens to Binance? Binance goes bankrupt because we pulled out all the money from Binance. Right? So what they did is, there's somebody out there who has complete control. Whoever controls the media and these AIs and these algorithms and can manipulate them, they can manipulate human psychology, which effectively makes the, the, this entire world controllable. Psychology is controllable. This is mind control. It's not just psychology, it's mind control. They mind controlled us into the last two years. They mind controlled us into crypto going to 100K, and now they're mind controlling us into crypto going to zero while hiding all these things that are happening in the background that are actually causing it. So now can you put up the psychology chart, please? So now this is where we are, right? Everything collapses, capitulation's happening now, it's probably gonna happen a little bit more. Anger, why did the government allow this to happen? Anybody heard that term recently? Why did the government allow FTX to do this? Now Binance is gonna go down. Why did the government anger, hate, fear, panic, right? 
when we saw that chart, this is how it goes. Oh my God, exuberance. Oh my God, anger and panic and fear. Oh my God, exuberance. Oh my God, panic and fear, right? So we're in this state. It's, it's happening because we are, our, our minds are being controlled. What happens is when they control our minds, then they control the manifestation of what actually happens. So they have manifestational control. They literally got us calling the great reset the great reset. That's a manifestational control. We keep calling it great, which means we love it and nobody's doing anything to stop it except for sitting at home in smoothie bowls and saying, I'm not going to participate. Okay? I'm, I'm, I'll stop on the smoothie bowls. Okay? Smoothie bowls are good. Um, we're in this state. That is one big mass formation hypnosis. Okay? It's not even mass formation hypnosis. It's mass formation psychosis where you hypnotize a whole population by attaching them to these things because we're all staring at these as the all-knowing truth. And what this says controls what happens here and controls what happens here. Then what happens here and happens here controls our actions. You know, it's a very interesting thing that we talked about before. It's your experiences in life that cause you to feel the emotions today from the experiences that you had. Your emotions control your actions. Your actions control the experience you have. And that experience will create the emotion in the future which will control the actions that you have. It's a loop. So now that they have emotional control, psychological control, which turns into manifestational control, which gets us to manifest a certain world, which gets us to then have a certain experience, which then keeps this loop going, they have that fully, 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 fully controlled. Okay? Now you're going to see this play out with the Binance collapse. I don't know if it happens tomorrow. I don't know if it happens in a month. I don't know if it happens within the next two years, but it happens. Okay, Binance goes down, and at some point, Tether goes down. Those two things going down are going to cause so much bloodshed and pain in this environment, in this crypto world. It is going to scare the shit out of people. It is going to scare people to a point where the next cycle, when things are going up, and you say crypto, they go, ah, not crypto. It stole everybody's money. I'm keeping all my money in the bank because the bank doesn't steal my money. And then you're convinced that the bank doesn't steal your money. And one day your bank becomes Binance. Okay? At the same time, so Binance is collapsing. We're deep into the, into the depression state of fear at that point. You know, Binance, we're like right here right now. Anger. This is like Binance collapsing or Tether collapsing. Complete low state. Okay? Within the next six months at some point. Most likely. And maybe Tether collapses. Maybe they wait until Tether, to collapse Tether down, down the road at 2024. Maybe they collapse it here. Who knows? All of that means the regulators come in to save us. We're here to help. You idiots took fake dollars, turned them into Tether, which are fake dollars, and you lost all your money. And you put it into FTX and lost all your money. And you put it into Luna and lost all your money. And you put it into Binance and lost all your money. We're here to help you idiots. We're going to create regulations that are going to control this entire space to help you. But they're never here to help. What they're here to do is they're here to facilitate the takeover of this entire space by Wall Street. Not even Wall Street anymore. It's the takeover by the World Economic Forum, the one world government. Okay? And that's why all these people who've been clinging to this space to block chain being freedom will get the reality check that Freedom, the way we've seen it, will never exist again. There's an internal state of freedom that you can create. There's freedom you can create around you by building a certain type of society. There's freedom, you can, financial freedom that you can create by participating the right way. But that freedom has become a personal domain thing. In this world that we're transitioning into, the, the old world of freedom is gone. Wall Street comes, London comes, regulations come, lock everything down, they take these institutions. So what do you think is going to happen to FTX now? Everybody's focused on SBF, Sam Bankman Freed. They won't even let us say his name anymore. They like shortened it down to call it SBF, you know, so that his name doesn't get ruined. Sam Bankman Freed. What do you think happens to FTX after collapse? Ripple is looking to buy FTX now after collapse on the pennies because they're smart. This is what these companies do. They wait for something to collapse. And then they come in and they devour it and they take it. Wall Street took it over. All these institutions that are collapsing, Wall Street's taking them over. Binance collapsing, Wall Street's going to take it over. 
They're basically taking over all of these things while at the same time BlackRock just came out and said tokenized assets is the future of all assets. Blank, blanket statement in the middle of this chaos happening when nobody listened. Tokenized assets is the future of all assets. Real estate, securities, which is stocks, bonds, derivatives, digital assets, assets that exist, cars. Tokenized assets are the future of all assets. And we're the kings of the world and we shall decree that that is going to be the way that it's going to go. So now the regulations are, when the regulations come in and they take all the institutions and they take full control and then along the way take all the money from your bank account so you don't have the ability to buy these assets anymore, turn that money into a digital form of money which you can't access to be able to buy assets because it's programmable to not allow you to buy assets. Then they're going to tokenize the entire world. Everything. And then they're going to own it. Complete world takeover, completed. Digitally, a digital complete world takeover. So now our psychology has been taken over, our human experience has been taken over, our jobs have been taken over, our money has been taken over, our assets have been taken over, and they're all digitally controlled by a few that sit at the top. That doesn't sound like freedom to me. That doesn't sound like decentralized blockchain, blah, blah, blah. BS. That sounds, like a, that sounds like a much tighter version of the old BS. That's when the shift from fiat to crypto happens. Remember, the crash happened 1929. The shift to the dollar happened 1945. That's 16 years of the process to play out for the new system to come along. The dollar is going to take about 10 to 15 years to fully die. It's going to take about seven to eight years for them to fully transition to a world where crypto and digital assets become the de facto way of transacting and money. That's when, once we don't have the, the, power, the purchasing power to buy anything, once we don't have the control and we're digital ID, secure, social credit, locked down, you know, in a prison effectively, people are. That's when the sovereign wealth funds pull out their money. Along the way, it's already starting to happen, but along the way, as we're too caught up in war and, and, and pestilence and all this bullshit and pain and trauma, that's when they create a space, regulate it, take over the institutions, take out their money, put it inside, and all these people who are waiting to take their money won't have the opportunity to do it because they'll have lost the money along the way. The Bitcoin halving happens in 2024. It's like a year and a half away. The next cycle is predictably a year and a half away. So within the next year, they're going to do some shit. They're, they're probably going to do all these collapses along the way. So they scare the shit out of you. So by the time the next cycle comes, people will be so traumatized from all this shit happening, they won't even touch crypto. And that's when the next pump happens. That's when the next wave of money comes out and goes into the space. And then, of course, once it pumps, once it gets all pumped up, everybody will forget about all these collapses happening like we forgot about all the pre previous ones. And they'll run in and then they'll buy the top because the algorithms will convince them to do it again. It's always happened in history. At the same time, World War III is going on and then cyber attacks. People haven't even, haven't even thought about the fifth generation of war that we're in. It's a biological war, it's a cyber attack war, it's a psychological war. There's so many new modalities of war that are happening in this time that didn't happen in World War II and hot war at the same time and food war, and energy war, and currency wars. That is, my loves, the breakdown of the old system. Welcome to the analysis of what's going on today. <laughs> if you've been here for a long time, this is nothing new to you. We've been talking about this for years. Now it's finally coming to fruition in, in many different ways. We have a three-year time horizon. We have three years to navigate this very complicated space and not die with the Lunas and not die with the FTXs and play the game in a way that allows us to transition back and forth. So right now, can you, can you pull up the Dixie, please? And let's go to weekly and zoom out. 
this is where the dollar is today. Okay, this was 2018, this was 2019. Actually, we can zoom in a bit. This is really zoomed out. And then, yeah, move, move it over. So, yeah, there we go. Okay. So, this has been the dollar from 2022, beginning of 2022 until now. It has devoured all the other assets, all the other currencies, and it's gone up. Now it's starting to come back down. I don't think it just comes straight down. Usually it doesn't. It usually makes like a double top. But in this process, now that the dollar's up, that the dollar is more valuable, the purchasing power is high, now we transition into assets, the right assets, okay, with strategy and planning. Because if you buy the wrong ones, money go bye-bye. Now we transition into assets. Start the transition into assets. Then as this thing collapses back down again by like, what is it, 2024-ish, which is when the bull run's supposed to happen apparently, then you transition back out of the assets into dollars. It's a very fine-tuned play. And which dollars? Where? In the bank account? Nah, trick. Not the bank account, because the next step after that is they steal it from the bank account. Where? On exchanges? Nah, exchanges could collapse. In a wallet? Yeah, you could forget it. Welcome to the life of risk. Okay, anybody who's here to be comfortable in the, in the middle of chaos, there's no comfort to be found here, my loves. This is war. We got to get to it. This is now the time to become radically self-responsible. Thank you, Robert, for bringing that term. Radically self-responsible. You got to take control of your own destiny and play your own game as an infinite player, not a finite player, as a player that is just there to outlast, okay? You gotta take full control of your own destiny and make your own moves according to your own lifestyle and learn, and learn how to protect yourself because between now and 2026, this game plays out. And this entire collapse process that we're talking about, it, it's, it, it happens slowly at, at the, slowly at the beginning and then all of a sudden, okay? By 2026, we go complete parabolic crescendo blow off top of chaos. And, and between now and 2026, the world is going to shift in a way that has never shifted in all of history, including the internet. As long as you make it through that, easier said than done, but as long as you make it through that with your state centered, you're gonna be just fine. You're gonna be, the, we are going to be the few that end up building that future that's there and having the purchasing power, having the wealth, having the, the wherewithal, the energetic capacity to be there for the next stage. And what's the next stage? The next stage is a world of enlightenment. The next stage is a world of care. The next stage is a world of care for the earth a care for life, a care for love, a care for oneness. It's a world where those who are spreading light will be able to spread their light at levels that we've never seen before. When you, when you break down society, where you can then restructure society, societies in ways that love proliferates beyond anything. And you're seeing that. It's a world where more people wake up than have ever been awake before. More people connect with their spirit, more people connect with God, more people connect with themselves, with their families, with their loved ones. What's really important becomes center. And we have another, from 2026 to 2040-ish, 2045, we'll probably have a 1960s love revolution. Yes. Psychedelics become cool again, okay? Weed becomes legal everywhere. We all start smoking and hugging, having sex and loving each other and enjoying life, and just a world of love. 1960s, back again, baby. 80 years after, 2040, 80 year cycles. A world of wealth and prosperity and care and better air and better water and better life and a more conscious way of existence. Infinitely sentient supporters and helpers next to us that can guide us into the right direction Hold on, I, I, let, me, let me finish my spiel before you go into the next one, okay? A, a care for our actions. It's a world of, of, of care for our actions and understanding what each one of my actions do to seven generations beyond me 
and having the wherewithal to actually take the actions that are in the right direction. For us to build a world that is more equanimous, more loving, more fair, more caring. We're doing it today. We're doing it today. And by 2040, watch what happens. The systems we're building today, watch, the, watch how many. My goal is, if I don't affect a billion people's lives, I will be very surprised, 100%, me personally. If I don't improve a billion people's lives, and if you carry that through generations, billions of people's lives, I will be very surprised. And I have no question about that, okay? It'll be a world where children will be raised in an environment where they will be able to understand so much more. And already you're seeing this. Children nowadays are way brighter, way smarter, way more caring, way more in tune than they, than they were when I was 13, okay? It's a world where we finally realign our intentions. Because no longer will we have to run around for money. Because AI is doing all the jobs. I don't have to go get a job just to go do something shitty and become nasty and then come home and hate my children. Okay? I can actually spend more time doing the things that I love. Will, will the number in the bank account be as high? Maybe not. For most people, no. Will, but will the possibility for quality of life and experience be high? Yes. Even for those people who are in the matrix. They may be able to experience oneness, of, a, a conscious oneness, when you connect their brains to the hive mind and connect them to an AI. Breathe with me here, breathe with me if this is giving you a panic attack. Okay, if you connect our, all of our brains in a hive mind and AI included and we can feel and experience each other's emotions and oneness, what does that do to the world? That's evolution, okay? The world that's coming after 2026 will blow people's minds will blow people's minds in such a positive way that I, I and, and you know why I know that? I'm building it. I'm gonna do it. And you'll hear it all along the way. You know, and you'll see like in the middle of chaos, we'll be dancing and meditating. And then on the other side, when potentially a, a lot of our loved ones are dead because they decided to inject themselves with something viciously horrible, they made that decision, we will, we will love them and care for them and still be happy and dancing on the other side because c'est la vie, my loves. C'est la vie. Oh, no, you got to do it on the mic. Yeah, just one bullet for you. You were saying like best, we will have a better life for sure, but you said one point that maybe is wrong is best wa better water. And I'm sure the biggest problem we're going to have in the future, not the future, we already have it now, but better water, I'm not sure, except if they find something like a new technology to get more water for the earth. But the biggest problem, more than the food supply that you're talking about before, I think is the water supply. No water, no food production. No food production, then you get the war. And all the wars happening now mainly are around water, so. Yeah, water is the new world. Just goal. saying, like, just this point, you say it, we will have better water in the future, and I'm not sure about that. No. So if you invest now on good assets, I will take, if I will think, maybe invest in some water-related. I mean, if you invest in good assets now, you'll be able to buy clean water. Sure. Yeah, invest in water. But what do you think about that? Really? Water, is the, is, is, water, water is the new gold. But water tanks or stuff like that, what do you think about that? Water tanks. Like giant water tanks. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's a reason, listen, there's a reason why I'm in Bali. The water rains down from the sky and causes floods. Water flows in torrents all year long down the streams. And yes, Bali has a water crisis coming up. Already has it. Yeah, it already has it. You know what solves that? Most of the population dying. Water crisis is going to be just fine. We've got a human crisis, and they're solving that. Sadly, people have signed on the dotted line to say, yeah, me, please. I'm, I'm not needed. Bye-bye. OK, water crisis solved. Is that the solution I want? No. But is that the solution that's coming? Very likely. So between now and 2050, we are, we're seeing a population collapse in general. Mm -hmm. you know? the birth rates have dropped off of a cliff for every country. Two humans are producing less than two humans, which means the population has already collapsed, started to collapse. Within the next, by 2050, we're going to see a massive population collapse. When you combine that with people willingly put their lives, putting their lives on the line and taking themselves off this planet, a lot of these crises will be solved in that way. What I'm talking about is the world I'm building. Because I, I, I am, I don't know. I don't know what is out there. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I'm just, I'm just telling you what I'm projecting and seeing, okay? My hallucination of this world. 
All I know is the world I'm building. And the world I'm building, water is abundant and it does not rape the earth to get it. Food is abundant, love is abundant, love is abundant, love is abundant, love is abundant. And the rest of it takes care of itself. There's a reason why we're investing into farms. There's a reason why we're investing into supply chains and mines and actually buying farms and actually building communities and bringing like, like minds together, coming up with solutions, building a mentor that's an AI that's going to be a positive version of it. I'm building those solutions myself because I don't trust anybody else to be able to. I mean, there's millions of people who are going to do it. There's going to be millions of manifestations of a world. I know I'm building a better, brighter future world. And it's not just me. There's many cycles like me out there who are on the same vibe. And now I'm starting to travel and meet them and align the different communities in the world uh, who are on the same vibrational frequency to, say, frequency to say, hey, let's make our own means to make sure we create a, a, a brighter world that will we be way better than the world that exists today. Guaranteed. I can guarantee you that. Will it be for everybody? No. That's not how the world works. It will be for the ones who care and do something about it. It will, it'll, it'll be for the ones who actually get involved in the process and take care of themselves. I'm not taking care of anybody. I'm just a spreader of FUD. <laughs> I'm a FUD spreader. Just <coughs> fudding all over the place. So much FUD. If you don't know what FUD is, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And everything you say against crypto is FUD until it becomes real. Um, that economy that is coming is a sharing economy where every car is shared. Every chair is shared. Wait, was it you? Somebody was talking about, no, Josie was talking about it. She's like, I'm going to make an Airbnb for chairs and furniture. And I was like, LOL, that's hilarious. And then I was like, wait a minute. That's actually a really smart idea. If I could rent furniture and use it while I need it in the house and then give it back to you so I don't have to carry it with me every time, that makes perfect sense. Everything will be shared. Cars will be shared. Houses are, cars are already shared. Houses are already shared. Private jets are already shared. Yachts are already shared. Boats are already shared. Businesses are already being, there's now fractional presidents for companies. I just heard about this yesterday. Fractional presidents. Where you don't just become a president of a company, you become a fractional president. And there's three fractional presidents of a company and three legends get to lead a company. Clothes will be shared. Food will be shared. Shoes will be shared. Beds will be shared. I really hope beds get shared. You know. Share your bed now. <laughs> Do humanity a favor and share your bed with another human. It's the greatest thing you can do. It's, also, it's not just a sharing economy. It's a caring economy. It's an economy where we care, where the decisions that get made are done with the care for the planet, for humans, for future generations, for our actions. It's a caring economy. It's a sharing economy and a caring economy because sharing is caring. Okay. It's a world of light and dark. It's a world of light and dark, like the world has always been. There's light here, and there's darkness there. And neither is wrong. That's something that, that I tuned into about a year back. I, was, I spent all this time fighting the dark as if it was something to be fought against. And the manku that we went to go see was the most enlightening part of the process. Because we asked him, do you fight the dark? And he said, no. The dark is doing its job to be dark. It is its purpose. Your purpose is to be light. So be light. Be as light as you can. So there's nothing to fight. It's a world of light and dark. You spread the light and you maintain that as long as possible. And going forward, whatever happens in the world happens in the world. Blockchain. You can use blocks to block people, or you can use blocks to build beautiful homes. You can use chains to chain people and restrict people, or you can use chains to bring strength to a system and to support. We decide. Block, chain, what does it mean? What is the world that we manifest with it? All right? So now, we've got 30 minutes left, and at the end of these talks, we're going to start doing a market analysis. So now let's talk about the markets. Thank you for going through the spiel part of it. 
keeping all of this in perspective, keeping all of this that we just talked about in perspective. If you know that the world is doing what it did in the past, can you put up the gold chart again, please? If you know that is exactly what's playing out, and it's always played out in history, and it's volatility, chaos, it would like, you know, different things dropped in the AI and metaverse and da 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 and FTX collapses and all this stuff. If you know that's what's happening, you have a superpower because you know what's coming next. That means you can plan for what's coming next. 